Did you already install the A380X Alpha but are not sure how to set up SimBrief? In this video I will show you how to plan your flight using SimBrief for the A380X as well as import it in the A380X aircraft, both the electronic flight back but also in the FMS. Let's roll the intro and then let's look at how to do that. So the A380X from Fly-by-Wire has entered Alpha, right? Let's now have a look at how it integrates with SimBrief and Navigraph. They provided a nice description of it, but I will show it in the video to make it more clear for you how to do get those cool things. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got a SimBrief account, right? So I already have it open here, this is SimBrief. If you're having a subscription, like me, the Unlimited, you can use the latest RAC cycle. If you don't have it, you are using, I would say, one which is a little bit earlier compared to this one. But no, I would say, never mind, because it will work, right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to import the uh, SimBrief airframe for the A380X, right? It says save, copy this airframe into your fleet on SimBrief. So by simply clicking on this link, it will open uh, SimBrief and it will add all the information from the aircraft, right? This is very useful because then you can use it for flight planning more accurately. You can see that the name is also Fly-by-Wire A3X. And then once you are happy with it, happy with the name, you simply click Save Airframe. This will add the airframe. And if you go to the uh, dashboard now, you will see uh, or likely see that you will have some airframes. If you don't see it, you can select a few uh, airframes. And there you will find it, right? It's over here. It's the uh, A33. That's the one. And here you can see it's a fly-by-wire A3380 x Based on that, you can select plan and then you can start planning your flight. Or you can press the new flight option here. And if you selected that one, then you can select the airframes available. So let's assume that I want to fly from uh, Amsterdam to uh, JFK, right? I'm going to enter it here. And you will see that I've got the airframes available where I can select the A380X uh, from Fly-by-Wire. The nice thing about this is it will directly load all the information which is required for the aircraft, right? It will uh, show you the uh, client profile, uh, the CI value, right? The uh, cost index value, decent profile, the few uh, factor. You can even change your call sign. You can find your registration information here or change it. And then you can select this one, right? So K FB, uh, FBW, which is the call sign uh, for the aircraft. Uh, other things which you, of course, can change are other things like the few and other nice stuff. Uh, like few planning options, but those are by default hidden, right? Because it could be, I would say, a little bit overwhelming for you. By default, they're set to auto, which means that they're automatically being, I would say, calculated for you. If you're a more advanced simmer, then you might want to change these settings uh, depending on your needs. For now, we'll simply accept them, right? And then it will show me the flight. And then you can simply say generate flight. And then you've got your flight plan generated. Now, the next thing you, of course, need to do is make sure that you're on the correct airport. Now, I'm not on the correct airport, so I will show you how to do it, but likely it will not import it. If I would need to get it working, I would need to change this one pretty quickly. <laughs> because I thought, okay, hey, let's fly to Amsterdam from, to JFK, but let's do it the other way around, right? Let's fly from KJFK to uh, Amsterdam airport. And then I will press the generate button again. I just want to fly the other end, right? Else it likely won't load. And then once that has been done, right, there's no need to do anything else because it has added all the stuff. Now, the thing which you need to keep in mind that this is the first step, right? It's also explained in this step. You need to have this one and then you need to go to the aircraft itself, which is uh, found here. And then you will see several options already, right? You can see the import sim brief option. You can see also the uh, OFP, which is not loaded yet because that's due to the fact that we didn't set up the uh, integration yet. 
So to do that, you press this nice uh, gear, then you go to third party uh, add-ons or third party options. And then you would say, okay, hey, I want to use the Navigraph account link. This is the page which will bring up the uh, Navigraph account and then you can link it. I will pause the recording for now because I simply don't want you to see everything uh, because it's, I would say, my account, right? But let's do it. Uh, pausing the video and then we'll be back very shortly. So once you've done that, you will see the account name, you will see your subscription and you've got the ab ab I would say ability to override your SimBrief user ID. Normally, I don't think it's really required to do that, but you can uh, choose to do that. And then you've got several other options, like you can automatically import the SimBrief data if you want by selecting this button. If you don't do that, you will need to manually import it, right? So we need to go back to this one and then say import SimBrief data. And then it will load all the information. So it says, okay, hey, the view and payload is imported, which is cool. But you can also see that the other stuff is imported. And I really like this interface which they're using, right? So you can see uh, the weather uh, both on the departing airport and the destination airport. You can see any pin charts, which I will go into a little bit deeper uh, in a few seconds. And of course, you can also fly or view the OFP, right? You can either choose to select the OFP like this, or you simply can get an overview. If you want to get the overview, you will see a view like this, right? You can see the actual weight, uh, the maximum fuel capacity, maximum cargo, while the OFP gives you a little bit more information. And of course, also the ability to scroll to it using this scroll bar. If you find the text too small, you can easily zoom in like this, and then you can get all the information, which is really nice. Then on the ground, you won't see much, well, except a few. And a few can be can be changed here, right? Depending on your flight plan. But you can also perform some calculations, right? So fetching the airspeed from here, you can uh, sync this in data, right? Uh, which is the current altitude. Uh, you can calculate the top of descent, etc. Uh, but that's not related to SimBrief, right? So there's no SimBrief integration in this one. In some cases with other aircrafts it is, but in this scenario it isn't. Uh, or for this aircraft it isn't so keep it in mind then we've got the um, navigation part in navigation and charts there are a few options right there are no charts yet because there's no airport selected right so we can simply uh, k jfk i can add the sign here and then it will show me the map right so it will show me for example if i want to have the airport information it's fully integrated in this you can see that the views are also here right you can uh, reset the view, uh, you can zoom in or out. And that really makes it, I would say, easy to uh, view the map without leaving Flight Simulator. Uh, the other options you have is uh, to use the uh, local files, but as you can see, there's not much over here. Uh, likely you will have the ability here to load some additional files. Uh, but in this case, I will go for this one. Uh, and I can. you can also see that I can, uh, say, move to uh, dark mode, right? make it full screen as you can see here and use some other options like reset the movement uh, fit chart to the width uh, fit chart to the height and you can also reset the views over here then on front of each card you can see that i would say pin right so you can pin a card if you do that then they will appear here so you get easy access to those pin cards and then you can easily access them by pressing the pin you can also easily unpin them which makes it easy for this part. Then if we go to the ATC, there's nothing there for fill is also not, and likely also not for this one because this is the checklist. However, if we move to the uh, plan over here, whoa, a little bit here, then we can see the FMS, right? And the FMS likely has some information. So what we can do is we can uh, do a flight plan request. So let's do it. Here it says uplink insert in progress. So let's give a few minutes and then it likely will pull the information which we need to have, right? Uh, it depends because in some cases it might not work, at least for some aircraft I experienced some issues. Uh, so let's give it a few seconds and then see what happens. What I expect it to do is load all the information, right? Simply load the information from, okay, hey, this is the airport I'm departing from, this is the airport I'm uh, going to. And you can see that currently it says received the uh, CPNI F, F plan, which is good. 
now if it received it uh, how can i import it well using the option here right you can say insert and then it will add all the information you can see it as the flight number it added the departure the two and the alternate airport and it added also some other information like the uh, flight level the flight uh, cruise temperature the ci right the cost index as well as the uh, tropo not sure what tropo stands for if you know it then feel free to add it in the uh, comment box below this video then once you've done that right you can uh or say not you're good to go but you at least have the active in it uh done so then you can go to the uh irs right to make sure that it's aligned in most cases it's aligned in this case it is right so you can press the return button and i can have a look at for example the uh, departure right so if i press the departure you will see that i've got the ability to select the runway uh, over here right from a list which is provided uh inside the aircraft so once i know which runway i can use i can for example i select a pretty long one right probably we want to select uh well let's say free one lima and there you can see okay hey this is the active departure right and here you can change if it's an sid you can select JFK 5, D, E, E, Z, Z5, and then say temporary flight plan. But you can also, of course, decide not to do it, which in my case, I will do. So going back to the internet page again, there we've got a few unload options. And the few unload options, you can see that you've got an option here, which is called uh, fuel planning. I'm not sure if it does anything currently. I do expect that they will say uh, make it possible in the future to load the uh, fuel from the flight plan directly into uh, this uh, FMS but looks like that currently it's not, not possible right as you can see so you would need to set up the fuel planning yourself uh, based on the information which you of course can find in the flight plan right so if you would move over to the EFB then you would be able to find for example the zero fuel weight right the estimated one uh, you would also be able to find the other information uh, if you want. In some cases, it might be easier to switch over to the uh, overview option, which sometimes contains the information. So let's have a look. It's the maximum. So this is the maximum fuel capacity, maximum zero fuel weight, right? 303. And the actual GW values, uh, which are there, right? So we can simply try to add it. Uh, so 373 was it, right? So let's see where we can enter it, right? So next challenge. Next chance for us, where can we enter the value? Uh, if you press this option, you can simply enter the values using your keyboard. That's because by default, the on-screen dashboard, on-screen uh, keyboard is disabled. Uh, if you want to use it, you can still do that. But uh, first need to press enter, right? Because then it's gonna make sure that it uh, has added it. So if you want to change that, what you can do is go to the uh, sim options. And I follow the sort somewhere here. No, it was not here. Then it was in the aircraft options, likely. No. Realism. Uh, no. <laughs> really bad, of course. My bad. I should have watched it. I think it was here, right? So here you can see the on-screen uh, keyboard. And here you can also show the on-screen uh, keyboard, which you can, you can then be used to say, use it, uh, use that on-screen keyboard if you want. Now, of course we can say configure the rest, right? So the, the block, uh, the block view, which is set to 88695. So let's also enter that one. Uh, So let's do like that and then we've got the center of gravity don't forget to press the enter option oh. i thought it was was this value so if you entered an incorrect value right then you can see it here over here you see entry out of range so if that's the case then you made a mistake just like me i'm always bad at entering these numbers right so eight eight so likely it's then eight eight 88.6 yeah there we go and then we of course need to have the center of gravity and that's always where i'm struggling with right i play flight simulator a lot but i'm still struggling with reading this flight plan so it's not you that 
might have some difficulties with it it's also me because it's would say if you're not doing it say a lot of times then you will probably struggle with it uh, a little bit more and then we of course need to see okay where can we find it <clears throat> some case you would like to press search that would be a nice option right if you can simply search for it uh, cg well i don't see it to be honest if you do know where to find it right uh, let me know because i'm really interested i can't find it right now but hey let's assume that the center of gravity uh zero free weight center of gravity uh let's say uh well, 15 maybe not sure presenter again if it's incorrect right it will tell you so uh let me try again 55 also not like it oh then i'm gonna switch to in this case uh, simbrief because in some cases this nice interface from simbrief allows me to view it easier right so uh zero view weight is here uh where can we find it CG, right? This is the easy thing because you can now press uh, Ctrl F and then search for it. But in some cases, it also still doesn't find it, right? So let me let me simply put in a value which uh, might make sense. It might not make sense, but uh, it's a percentage. So maybe we can find a percentage over here, right? Uh, struggling to find it. This is so embarrassing, right? So, but. It five, I don't believe it. Well, let's see if we can let's say can compress five and then hit enter. Again, I don't believe that it works like that, but um, five. Yeah, this would really re would be really helpful if they would have I'd say added this functionality, right? Uh, so I'm gonna clear the info here well uh can we press view planning no we can't enter it right well this crap right sorry for that and uh, that i can't tell you where to find it i will let say have a look at it because i can't imagine that it's uh let's let's add, try to add one other value right let's add 43.7 oh it was really easy you can even find it here. Why didn't I have a look at it? So the uh, GWCG center of gravity can be found here. And then you can uh, I'd see that the fuel planning option is not available yet. Could have to do with the functionality in uh, this version, right? Because it still is the alpha version. But hey, it would be really nice if you can set it up. The flight plan eventually can be found here, right? So the flight plan itself can be found here. You can see that it departs from uh, this runway and it has to do with the temporary, which you can still see here. So I'm going to erase the temporary because this is a flight plan which is imported from uh, Simreef. And if you add a flight plan for, or not a flight plan, add, for example, a standard instrument of departure, it will do that. You can use these buttons over here to say scroll down. Uh, keep in mind that there is also discontinuity. Or, shown over here that if that's the case you might need to reactivate the autopilot once that's done so a lot of cool things are added already to the alpha release of uh, i would say uh, in this case the a380x right from fly by wire there are some functionality which are not yet available but likely will that will come in the next versions which will be released so switching to the external view right to show the aircraft again here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And I hope to see you back next time for another video about the A380X.